this is Kimberly Wilson, and welcome to the 463rd edition of Tranquility Du Jour. This week's episode is a newly offered Best of Tranquility Du Jour, featuring episode number 20 from 2006 on Journal Writing 101. Since many podcast players only go back a hundred episodes, we're broadcasting a few favorites, and this one shares journal writing tips and resources. For those of you new to Tranquility Du Jour, there's a link in the show notes, and also at KimberlyWilson.com, you'll find a Start Here button. Also, if you'd like to receive Tranquility Du Jour Love Note straight to your inbox a couple times a month, you can sign up for those also in the show notes at KimberlyWilson.com slash 463. A big thank you to our reviewer last week, K.O. Pelican, who said, I look forward to every episode. I've been listening to Kimberly's podcast on and off for several years, but in the last few months, it's become a must listen for me. The variety of topics and guests is wonderful, and Kimberly's sincere, upbeat manner is very inspiring. There are a lot of people in this podcast space, and I think she is the real deal. I love that. Thank you so much for taking the time to write a review. I so appreciate it. And I really appreciate, too, what you said about the podcast space, because it is funny having been doing it since... 2005, when I had to explain to people for quite a few years what a podcast was, it's so wonderful to see the many options out there. And so I really appreciate you taking the time to pin this thoughtful message. And I encourage others, if you have a moment to pin a review of the show on iTunes, would be so grateful. And there is a link in the show notes. Also, if you have a moment to Take a picture of your journal writing practice and share it online using hashtag TDJ podcast. So my hope is that by sharing images and ideas on what we're taking away from these podcasts, we can in turn inspire each other. So I just posted a photo on Instagram that's me journal writing with Mookie the pug nearby and You know, there is something about this process that I just find incredibly therapeutic. And so please share your photos. I love, love, love seeing them. So I wanted to mention a few things that I have coming up that you may be interested in. Now, those of you ladies who are local... September 29th through October 20th, I'm going to be hosting the four-week Tranquility Salon here in Washington, D.C. in my office, and it's a wonderful event that happens on Sunday evenings, and we deep dive into four topics, mindfulness, creativity, self-care, and dreams, and we only have four spots left, so if you're interested, please join us, and there's a link in the show notes. Also, everyone save the date for Fall TDJ Live. This is our free online event that happens quarterly, and that's happening on September the 15th. Now, those of you who live up in the Montreal area, I'm going to be up there September 20th through the 22nd helping with their advanced teacher training and talking yoga and creativity, the business of yoga, and mindfulness. So would love to see you there. It is open to the public. And those of you who are local or somewhat local, note that on October 27th, we're having our second annual Pugs and Pints events at a local brewery, and it's happening right around Halloween, so costumes are definitely encouraged. Would love to see you there. And again, it's a fundraiser to help support our micro-grants that we give to pig sanctuaries and pug rescues around the U.S. So there's a link in the show notes to the February 18th, 2006 show notes for this episode. I can't believe it was number 20. So please go easy on me as you have listened to it of, uh, you know, the early days of the recording. I don't even think we had an actual podcast mic. We didn't actually at that point. It probably took a couple years. So I was talking into the computer mic, which as you can tell, probably the sound quality is not the same as it is now that there are so many other kind of opportunities to upgrade, such as this beautiful podcast mic that we use that definitely helps. Greetings, this is Kimberly Wilson. Welcome to the 20th edition of the Hip Trinkle Chick Podcast, a girl's guide for living a luxe lifestyle on and off the yoga mat. I'm back in Washington, D.C. in the Pink Palace today, and our podcast is on journal writing, which is one of my favorite 
absolute favorite topics, um, along with our pose of the podcast, which is another one of my favorite yin yoga pose. Book suggestions, as always, Hip Tranquil Chick Chat, our newly added feature, and then more festive pod safe music to close the show. Follow along and view our show notes at hiptranquilchick.blogspot.com. So I'm going to begin by talking a little bit about what are the benefits of journal writing. Why would one even want to spend their time uh, with a pen and paper putting their thoughts down? And so I'm pulling these benefits, although I can definitely share my own, but putting pulling these benefits from journaling from joy. And um, this is a, a, a fabulous, very basic book that kind of breaks down numerous ideas and tips for journal writing. To know who you are, to turn problems into opportunities, to learn to trust yourself as your own counselor, to release feelings, turmoil, and stress, to access information from your subconscious mind, I think this one's very important, to find answers to what seems to be unanswerable, to capture the teachings of your past, to record experiences and thoughts you want to keep and remember, to awaken the writer's voice within you, to communicate with others when talking is difficult or impossible, to integrate what you are learning from a class lecture or life situation, to know yourself as a spiritual being, to heal the past, to live from being awake and aware of the present, and to create the future by conscious choice. Now, who of us don't want some of these things or all of these things actually. So to me, I, I, um, I really think of journal writing as a cheap therapist, <laughs> meaning I, I think even one of these books that I'm recommending refers to it as a seven, nine cent therapist, you know, because really you could pick up a, a just basic spiral bound, um, notebook, you know, for 79 cents. And, um, and so I really find the power and the benefit of journal writing to be unbelievable. I've been a journal writer since I think I was eight years old. And, um, you know, then my journals were more like, Christy's my best friend today, or I love Anthony today. I love Donald, you know, and they've definitely evolved from that. However, there's still that aspect of just kind of putting out there what's going on in your life. And I found since I've been in a relationship over the past couple of years, my journal writing has slowed because I think I come to my boyfriend with a lot of things that I used to process with my journal. And I think that, you know, it's definitely varied in relationships in the past. It hasn't been that way. Um, I would journal a lot about the relationship. Relationship. And, um, you know, so I think that as you grow and evolve as a journal writer and as a woman, um, you may find you, you'll need it more at different times. But anyway, those are just some of the, the major benefits with regard to journal writing. I want to share a quote by a woman named Marion Woodman. She says, when the mood grips us, that is the time to write. Let it pour out of the unconscious. Journal writing fulfills the need to pour out the heart. Most people find intimacy very difficult, even intimacy with themselves. Since the whole point of analysis depends on the intimacy, journal writing is crucial to recognizing those parts of ourselves that we have shunned. Unconsciousness needs the eye of consciousness. Consciousness sees the energy of the unconscious. Writing allows that inner change to take place. So my top 10 journal writing tips. First of all, you want to choose the perfect journal and writing tool. You may be fine with a spiral bound, um, just basic notebook um, from, you know, Target or Walmart. That's just like your basic writing Um you know, it could be a small one to fit in your purse or could it be a larger size one. However, um, you may be more inspired to write if you go to like Barnes and Noble and you pick up a nice journal. They range from like leather to vinyl cover to hard cover um, to great graphics on the cover. I tend to, I really do like spiral bound, although I like um, fun spiral bound, meaning I couldn't just pick up a 79 cent one. I don't think I'd be as inspired, although I do carry one of those around, a small one around in my purse at all times to record ideas. But for my journal, I like a spiral bound, so that way you can turn the page and you're not having to put your hand to keep the left side open. Um, you can turn the page and um, I also like it hard bound or hard, you know, like a hard cover and a hard, a hard front and a hard back. So that way it like holds up and you don't get the um, pages that begin to, um, 
you know, not tear, but just, you know, they like my little one that I carry on my purse, it tends to get very ratty. And that, in a way, um, doesn't inspire me. But the thing about it is I'm just writing ideas. So I'm not like sitting there and writing out thoughts or pouring my heart out like a journal is. So I encourage you to find a journal that you really, really feel comfortable with. And let this be a fun artist um, solo date for you to actually go and pick out your um, your favorite a journal or something that you think will be very inspirational. And believe me, they range from the 79 cent one, you know, up to, um, you know, $40 for a nice leather bound one. Um, so that is really important. First of all, is to choose the right journal. And then secondly, is to choose the perfect writing tool. So, um, do you like pens? Do you like crayons? Do you like markers? Do you like scented colored pencils? What is going to help you write? What's going to help you get your feelings and thoughts out? Secondly, carve out space in your schedule to write. So take your journal to a cafe or a family event. I find that um, whenever I go on, uh, you know, whenever I, I've gone to family reunions or if I go home for the holidays or, you know, sometimes still your family can be challenging. So I find that my journal serves as like the best confident friend you could possibly imagine. Um, so it's good to have it in challenging circumstances. It's uh, also if you're grieving in any way, it's nice to have it. Um, it's nice just to carry around in your purse at all times if you get a small one. So that anytime the muse hits when you're on the metro, um, whenever you're waiting somewhere, when you're waiting for a friend to arrive, whenever you just want to go to the cafe and sip your tea and write. Um, I saw in a book, I think it's like Living Out Loud, one of the books that I've recommended in previous podcasts where it says, um, you know, take your journal to a cafe and, you know, appear as a mysterious writer, you know, because you always wonder when people are just like writing away freehand, like, what are they writing about? So you could be that mysterious new author. Um, also taking it to the park, writing about the scenery around you. Um, and then of course in your bedroom, I, I tend to write in bed, you know, I'll just pull it out, um, in the morning or before I go to bed, before I go to sleep at night. And, um, so carving out the time in your schedule, I think is really important or just when the muse hits to be able to have it on you, to have it handy. Third is record your experiences, observe your patterns, your thoughts, your feelings, and your fears. Write out when you have that heavy feeling. And what I mean by that is, I don't know if um, other hip trinkle chicks experience this, but I find that whenever I've had an interaction or I got a phone call or an email that just didn't sit well, you know, I was just um, a little bothered by it, but then I move on. I still have a heavy feeling. And it's one of those things where I'm like, gosh, what's bothering me? What's sitting heavy on me that I need to kind of go back and explore a little bit? And I find that if you use your journal for this exploration, it can be really powerful because otherwise you'll just continue throughout your day with that heavy feeling without processing it. So using it for recording your experiences. And again, um, with this, if you will go back and reread your journal entries, you'll notice patterns. You will, um, a girlfriend I had tea with last night mentioned that she's noticed patterns in her relationships where she can actually trace it back where she's somewhat sabotaged relationships. And she was able to do that by saving her emails. But I think it's a similar situation where, you know, an email to another person may not be like a hundred percent true, um, gut raw feelings. Whereas what you write in your journal, ideally is. And so you can really go back and be like, Oh, this is, this is my tendency. This is how I'm always approaching situations like that. Or this is always how I deal with authority. Um, and then you can make changes based on these observations. Number four is use the time and the date. I've always been a dater. Like I will always date it, but I thought it was interesting, um, to start adding the time that I'm writing because, you know, you may notice that you tend to, whenever you wake up in the morning, you're writing about the same thing of like, oh, woe is me, oh, this, oh, that. And it's like maybe in the morning you notice um, that you're a little less excited to get out of bed. You're a little less excited to get the day going. And then you can think, well, what can I do to actually make some changes in the morning so that I will kind of leap out of bed with excitement about the day? Or at the end of the day, do you find that um, your energy levels lower you're a little bit more pessimistic or you're a little more optimistic about things. And so I think it's, it's, um, helpful, I think, to record the date and the time. 
Another thing to remember there is to write quickly without any attention to grammar or punctuation. Thank goodness, right? Because um, there's no spell check in your journal. Um, it doesn't matter if you use their T-H-E-I-R, T-H-E-Y, apostrophe R-E, T-H-E-R-E. You know, um, ideally, this uh, good grammar will carry over. But, you know, sometimes it's like you can get so caught up in that that you're not able to just let the pen dance across the paper. And I encourage you to try to do that. Um, and number five is ensure privacy. This is key because um, you need to be able to write down what you need to get off your chest. And if you're concerned about someone else finding it, that is a very, very big problem. So what I've done in the past to remedy that situation is I take my journal with me, or I did, um, everywhere I went so that that way it was never left alone for anyone to get a hold of. And I think this would play into if you're, um, you know, in a relationship where you live with someone and you're contemplating getting out, or if you, um, are in, a, in an abusive relationship, or if you have kids that you think may get a hold of it, or if you have roommates or live in a group house, all this sort of stuff. Because I, I tell you, I mean, the, um, seeing a journal just sitting out on a, on a desk, I think is very tempting to many people. It's like the insight into someone's psyche. And so do your best to protect yourself by, you know, even just putting it underneath your mattress or underneath your bed or, you know, someplace where someone would really have to look for it. I think that that will help um, many new journal writers especially feel comfortable with putting their thoughts out there. So moving into what in the world to write. Um, here's a quote by Anais Nin, who's one of my, my favorite women of all times, and I'm an avid uh, journaler. Put yourself right in the present. This was my principle when I wrote the diary, to write the thing I felt most strongly about that day. Start there, and that starts the whole unraveling, because that has roots in the past, and it has branches into the future. I chose the event of the day that I felt most strongly about, the most vivid one, the warmest one, the nearest one, and the strongest one. Anais Nin. So number six, I like to write about um, really exploring where I am at a particular moment. And then also noticing if I'm a tape recorder, you know, where it's like, oh my gosh, I'm writing the same thing over and over again. And I find that if I have a really nice journaling session on my birthday or at the end of a calendar year, it can be really powerful. So I encourage you to, those of you who are a little nervous about getting started with journal writing, is to sit down and say, okay, today is February 20th. Today's February um, 28th. Whenever you're listening to this, today's June, whatever it is, and say, this is where I am right now. This is what I've accomplished since the last June or the last February, whenever you're listening to this podcast. And, and then say, this is what, and then write a list of what I want to accomplish by next in one year this time. So by my next birthday or by the next February 20th, President's Day or, you know, whatever it is. Um, so really reflect on the past year and, and you'll be surprised, um, what you have accomplished that you haven't acknowledged yourself for. And then also to put forth what it is you want. What is it you want to have done by the following year? And this is a great thing to do end of the year at the change of the seasons. We have the spring equinox coming up shortly. So um, taking some time to do that, I think, can be really helpful. I, I really love doing that. I did that in June by the recommendation of um, my illustrator. And then I did and then I always do it um, at the end of the year. So that's one thing that I think is really kind of a fun key component to write. Secondly, or number seven, under um, what to write, secondly, under what to write, number seven is, uh, is sending, or not sending, but writing unsent letters. So for instance, do you have a relationship or do you have, um, you know, a situation that you haven't been able to resolve and it still kind of eats away at you? And then it's taking the time to actually write it out, write out what you want to say to this person and not sending it can be so very powerful. So I encourage you to explore this. Um, number eight, lists. Making lists. Because sometimes you sit down and you're like, I don't know what to say. There's a scary blank page just looking at me, staring at me. You know, so oh, sometimes what I'll do with that is I'll do lists such as I like, I want, 
I need, I would like to, I love, I hate, things I want to do before I die, things that I think are fun, ways I'd like to help others, things that nourish me, what I want to be known for, reasons to stay with X, um, people I'd like to meet. You know, it can just go on and on. You can have a lot of fun with this one. Number nine is visual writing. Okay, so visual writing is um, those of you who like to use pictures. And you don't necessarily have to be artistic by any means, because Lord knows I'm not. My um, drawings consist of stick figures. However, it's fun. It's really fun to um, put things down on paper with watercolors or, you know, as I mentioned earlier, colored pencils, so you could sketch something out. Um, reading from A Voice of Her Own, which is one of the books I recommend, it's on women and the journal writing journey. She says, um, she talks about an author who describes an exercise he calls soul country, in which you draw a map of your inner world, then embellish it with images and colors. You can experience yourself as a continent or an island, a mountain or a lake. Then there's also a mandala exercise, which is um, you have a circle and you divide the circle into four quadrants, which can be filled in with designs, patterns, or meaningful reference points for your life. The mandala is an ancient symbol of wholeness, consisting of the combination of a circle and a square. Often we enhance the visual contents of our diaries without even thinking about it. So let the um, let a sense of artistic creativity kind of shine forth with what may be viewed as a somewhat um, left-brained exercise of writing. And um, let the left and right brain come together through visual writing, which I think is really powerful and really fun. And, um, you know, just drawing pictures of like, this is what I want, or this is what I envision my life looking like. I remember one time we did this at a, at a um, workshop that we did um, during snowy times up in like January up at the beach. And it was like such a neat, neat retreat with um, a few women and, you know, I drew an image of like me on the beach with a significant other. I didn't have one at the time. And, you know, it's just a nice way to put out to the universe what you are wanting. And number 10 is explore your dreams. Um, so exploring dreams is a really powerful way to, um, get a little bit closer to what is going on in your head that you're not even aware of. I've noticed my dreams over the past few days have just been so bizarre and they're easy to forget. So I wanted to share with you from, um, journal to the self, which she, she gives a few ideas on how to increase dream recall. She says, keep a notebook, pen, and small flashlight by your bed. When you awaken with a dream, write it down immediately. Disturb your waking environment as little as possible. Go to sleep with the conscious intention of remembering your dreams. As you fall asleep, try visualizing yourself writing your dream in your journal. Write down anything you can remember from your sleep. Especially write down anything that frightens you, baffles you, seems particularly odd, or from which you awaken with a distinct feeling in your body. And then be good-natured about the process. I think that's important because um, it's easy to get frustrated like, why can't I remember? Um, so one other thing that comes to mind that she didn't mention, um, in her book, but that I've read before and that I think is really powerful is to ask yourself a question. Maybe you're wondering, um, you know, should you take this new job? Should you venture out on your own and go to sleep asking your question, kind of, um, asking your, um, your mind to answer this while you sleep. I think that can be a really, really powerful exercise also. And then write in the morning about what came to you. So I wanted to share with you um, another guided or one journal journal writing exercise that is a guided exercise. And in this, it talks about stepping stones, which I think are um, an important thing to think about with regard to your life of what are the kind of main pieces of your life. Okay, you are born, of course. Then maybe you um, remember the tooth fairy and then you go into, you know, your first day of kindergarten and then going up like things that were somewhat milestones or just stepping stones in your life. So I'm going to take you through one. And um, and this is, again, for stepping stones, kind of uh, 
pulling together the stepping stones from your life. And this is from Journal to the Self. Allow yourself to relax. Close your eyes. Take a slow, deep breath. Hold it and release it. Do it again and again. And now begin to imagine that you're sitting in a theater and on the screen is the movie of your life. Watch the images go by, the images of the turning points of your life as you are living it today. Feel the rhythm and flow of your life events from birth to the present moment. Notice how your life has unfolded. Notice the events at which you can say, ah, my life was never the same again after this particular decision or event. These are the stepping stones of your life. There's no need to do anything but watch and feel and notice. Stay there as long as you please. And when you are ready, open your eyes, take a deep breath, and list the stepping stones of your life. So a guided meditation or a guided journal writing session from journal to the self. So there's my top 10 ideas on journal writing. I feel like I could do 10 podcasts on this. So this is a quick overview. And if you would like a little more um, depth into some of these topics, email me, let me know, because I'd love to expound on this. I find journal writing to be so, so powerful. So this is kind of like journal writing 101. All right. So moving along to the pose of the podcast today, it's uh, again, a yummy yin pose, which is dragon pose. And it's the yin variation of runner's lunge, which you may be familiar with. So you begin on in table pose on your hands and knees, and then step your right foot up between your hands and ease your left knee back. And then you're going to begin to feel a stretch at the front of your thigh and your groin. Now lift your torso upright and rest your hands onto your right knee for balance. Allow your left thigh to descend toward the floor. And you can experiment with chain, challenging the ankle and Achilles tendon by bending the front leg a little more deeply. Now this gets pretty intense, so I want you just to breathe here. Hands are on the knee, shoulders relaxed, and just soften. See if you can release into this very, very deep pose. Now remain here and still for anywhere from one to five minutes and then repeat on the other side. In between the two sides, you may want to come to table pose and then move the hips and the torso in circles and just kind of work out of, of that because it's a very, very, very deep but intense and fun. I love this pose. Pose. All right? So that is dragon pose. And that's taken um, from Paul Grilly's Yin Yoga book that I recommended last week. Fabulous, fabulous book. Okay, so the book suggestions, the book I mentioned um, in the podcast that will also be on the blog and in the show notes is A Voice of Her Own by Marlene Shui, S-C-H-I-W-Y. Journal to the Self by Kathleen Adams. Journaling for Joy by Joyce Chapman. At a Journal Workshop by Ira Progoff. Journal of a Solitude by May Sarton and Anais Nin Diaries. Any of them. I collected them all. They're amazing. She's a very, very insightful woman. So the last two that I recommended are actually journals for you to read. All right. So sharing our hip tranquil chick chat. And thanks again to so many of you for writing and for um, contacting me and letting me know how this podcast has assisted you on your journey. I love hearing from you. And this is from a dear, dear woman who actually is the reason I did the Yoga 101 podcast. She recommended it. 
So she says, yes, I did hear your podcast, Get Your Yoga On, and I absolutely loved it. I've listened to it a few times, but life has been so hectic I haven't had a chance to write yet. And I really mean it that I've been wanting to thank you. I have actually been wanting to comment on several things from your podcast that I have found so enriching to me, but I don't want to come off as some sort of crazed fanatic or anything. Even when I was young, I was never the type of girl to write fan mail to anyone. And to this day, I just never get real obsessed with anyone that I feel compelled to contact them even once, let alone more than that. It was your recent podcast, though, where you asked for updates, comments, and thoughts that I felt I needed to write you and let you know how much your podcasts have enriched my life. In a way, this is an unusual relationship. I feel I know so many things about you. It must be sort of a, an odd experience to have some total stranger open up to you in an email because they do feel as if you are, in a way, a friend. And I have to tell you, I've really enjoyed all your podcasts. That alone seems unusual to me because I would expect at some point to hear you talk about something that I just, that I feel just doesn't interest me at all. But that hasn't happened and I keep enjoying each and every podcast as well as referring to your website and blog. So I just wanted to share this as, um, A, a huge thank you to this listener and um, reader, but also um, as a reminder that it's interesting how putting yourself out there and connecting with other people, and you and I can do this in so many ways, can really have an impact on other people's lives because they begin to feel as if they do know you and you are a part of their world and they're a part of yours, even though the odd thing is we're only connected from you know, our words and the fact that we do have podcasts now, which I think are just absolutely amazing, but also, um, you know, just this total virtual way of communication can really have a profound impact on lives. And, um, so a a big thank you to this listener and, um, a big thank you to those of you who are also doing things in ways that are enriching and uh, supporting other people's lives in a way that that you're making friends with people you may never have the opportunity to meet, except for in this virtual world. Because I think the great thing about it is, is we realize that we're not alone and that there's other people that think and feel the same way we do, even though they may not be in our domain, meaning they may not be like at your work or at your home or at your church or wherever you go and seek community. So um, thank God for online onlineness. <laughs> so thank you again for writing. Um, so as always, um, share your thoughts, share your needs, share your suggestions with me. Um, I love, love hearing from you. Savvy sources. So mention in the podcast, just a reminder, takeaways, please share your journal writing practice using TDJ podcast would love to see it or take a screenshot of you listening to the show post it and tag me at tranquility du jour and then also if you have a moment to share a review of any of the books on amazon would love to hear what you think about the day book and i'll be doing more associated with a day book kind of the closer we get to the end of the year and uh would just love to hear kind of how you're feeling about it what you're thinking And I hope that you're finding it useful to ideally infuse a bit more tranquility into your day. Now, Tranquility Du Jour Online, just a reminder that you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, where I recently released a new Tea with Kimberly video and showed a few tranquility tools that I find to be helpful in everyday life to infuse a bit more tranquility. There's also a link to Your Tranquility, my book that came out in January, and then, of course, the day book that came out in June. Also, I wanted to mention that we will be doing the Tranquility Fall photo shoot happening in just a couple weeks and really excited to share with you what's going to be happening for fall. And uh, you can find all this, of course, over at Tranquility.com. We're going to have a super cute sweatshirt, which I love sweatshirts with uh, like fancy fun fluffy, flowy skirts. And I also am going to be doing a duster that I had a sample made for me to travel to Italy with and fell in love with it. I wear it all the time now. And I'm going to be adding a sash to it so that you can wear it as a duster or you can wear it as a wrap dress. So super cute. Look, look for that coming soon. 
Reminder that there is a Tranquility Jour podcast app for iPhone and Androids. And then also a link to a variety of e-courses. And I will be releasing a new one soon. So stay tuned for all the details on that. So thank you as always for tuning in. I hope this podcast inspires you to get writing and to uh, begin putting those thoughts onto paper. Wishing you a wonderful weekend ahead. Namaste. Mm-hmm.